trains on the Austro-Hungarian border measure the scope of Hungary's anti-red revolt. West Hungary is rebel controlled. From the uniforms of border guards, from the flags, the red star has been ripped. The hated symbol of communism is effaced wherever found. As sporadic fighting continues, the red regime offers virtual self-rule and Russian forces begin withdrawals. Shipments of plasma are rushed across the frontier where once the Iron Curtain barred all friendly contact. Casualties are believed to number thousands after days of fighting in which patriots with small arms battle Russian tanks and troops. From the United States, more plasma and medical supplies are being airlifted. The human need is clear. But the political outcome hangs in the balance after a revolt that began with student demonstrations and spread across the country like wildfire. At the United Nations, 5,000 denounced the massacre of Hungary's rebels, a grim reminder of the cost of the most telling blow ever struck at Russia's satellite empire. At the end of a six-day fight that astonished the world and shook the Kremlin to its foundations, Hungary was free, free to fraternize on its own borders and Russian supplies to the stricken city of Budapest along roads littered with burnt-out red tanks disabled by almost unarmed men fired by passion for liberty. Flaring swiftly from student demonstrations into open revolution, the pent-up hatreds of oppression sent Russian might reeling and forced withdrawal of the red yoke. But even as these scenes were recorded, rumors flared of the re-entry of Russian forces and new fighting. A beautiful city of Budapest, scarred by conflict, again faces a Russian onslaught, even before the debris of the fight for freedom is cleared from the streets. In startling developments, Hungary broke with a satellite Warsaw Pact military alliance, announced neutrality, and pleaded for priority on the United Nations agenda. Then word came that Russian forces were massing, and all communication with the West was cut off. Hungary's newfound freedom is menaced before the martyrs of revolution go to their rest. The streets of Rome are thronged with demonstrators cheering Hungary's fight against red domination. Students began the demonstration in the early morning, 500 of them. By midday, over 10,000 had joined the anti-communist protest. In nearly every major Italian city, similar demonstrations were staged. But in Rome, things got a little out of hand. When the crowd marched on Communist Party headquarters, police moved in to keep order. In a matter of minutes, the political demonstration dissolved into a non-political riot. It started with scuffles that quickly turned into slugfests. Through the heart of the city, the battle between students and police raged. No new thing in Italy, but perhaps by its very intensity, a measure of Rome's anti-communist fervor. For five frantic days, Budapest is free, and our American cameraman is there to record Hungary's hour of hope and heartbreak. And our Russian hatred, smoldering for a decade, erupts without warning. The flames of liberty and revenge against tyranny leap high. A 16-year-old girl risks her life to remove the despised symbol of Russian enslavement. Throughout the city, Soviet war memorials come crashing down. Budapest is in revolt. With uncontrolled fury, crowds set fire to Russian flags and put Soviet books to the torch. The Red Star is sent tumbling into the gutter. comes up shooting on the other side of the city, and the rebels, armed now, run to the scene. A quiet park has become a no-man's land. Our cameraman is caught in the crossfire as rebel sharpshooters advancing across the square attack the headquarters of the Soviet-controlled secret police. The Hungarian patriots refuse to give ground before the withering fire from the building. They are showing the world that freedom is worth dying for. A tank moves up. Is it rebel or red? No one knows as its gun swings to point directly at our cameraman. It belongs to the rebels, and behind it, white-coated first aid men care for the wounded. And then turning on the Soviet stronghold, the tanks lead the final victorious assault. As the rebels storm the building, the impossible is happening. A handful of heroes has shaken the communist world to its foundations. They have turned the tables on their Soviet tormentors. 
The rebels ride their tanks triumphantly through the streets. The Russians have given their word that they will withdraw all communist troops from Hungarian soil. The victory seems complete. Cardinal Menzenti, who has suffered long persecution under the Reds, leads his countrymen in praying for an end to the fighting. The jubilant people of Budapest, flushed with the excitement of their historic struggle, surround our cameraman's car. They press closer, pleading, tell the world we are free, we have cast off our chains. Faces white, free of fear, tell the story of Hungary's hour of hope as our cameraman hurries these pictures to the Austrian border. Behind him, Russian tanks rumble back into Budapest to turn that hope into heartbreak. 5,000 come with 200,000 Soviet troops to snuff out the torch that brave Budapest had held so high. Tears stream down the cheeks of grief-stricken refugees who must flee now for their lives. Loved ones, dead or captured, are left behind as Russia, without mercy or conscience, tries to wipe out the country that so grievously wounded it. The pathetic procession makes its way to the Austrian border. While far away, a rebel radio broadcasts a last agonized plea. On the watchtower of 1,000-year-old Hungary, the last flame begins to go out. The Soviet army is attempting to crush our troubled hearts. Listen to our call. Our ship is sinking. The light vanishes. The shadows grow darker. God be with you and us. A flare arcs across the sky. Communist tanks appear. Soviet forces are sealing off the border. But before the Iron Curtain slams down, a last truck careens to freedom. From their hearts and from their flag, the Hungarian people have ripped Russia's hated symbol. This is battered Budapest under the brutal Russian boot. Soviet tanks roam the streets amid the ruins they made as communist secret police hunt down heroic freedom fighters. Here for all the world to see is grim evidence of the brutality and savagery with which the red tanks blasted a defenseless people and their city. Two Budapest cameramen risked execution to make these pictures and smuggle them out of Hungary. 25,000 Hungarians are dead Budapest is ravaged, but the communist masters cannot crush a proud people. Defiantly, they chant, we shall be free. Refusing to live under Soviet tyranny, refugees stream into Austria. They flee with little more than the clothes on their backs. At journey's end, they can smile again. Border guards beckon the refugees on as they brave the quicksand of an icy quagmire. The Russians have blockaded highways and destroyed bridges in a desperate effort to halt the mass exodus. But in six weeks, 120,000 Hungarians slip out of their troubled homeland. A refugee shows how the communists are spraying the escape routes with machine guns. Even the bravest must weep at leaving the country where their ancestors have lived, worked and died for more than a thousand years. A flag marks the border as the flight to freedom goes on. Carrying his son on his back, a father struggles through the shoulder-high marsh grass. Traveling day and night in freezing cold, the refugees stumble, numb and dazed, onto Austrian soil. By cover of night, other Hungarians make their escape on a tree trunk spanning a 14-foot border canal. Eager hands reach out to pull each refugee to safety. An endless flow of displaced and homeless, fleeing the black night of Soviet terror. Austrian relief agencies provide transportation to 63 refugee camps, where the uprooted Hungarians are housed and fed. None are turned back despite crowded conditions. 1,300 refugees find asylum in Holland, one of 16 countries offering new homes to the latest victims of communist inhumanity. The free world, which suffered through Hungary's gallant struggle for freedom, opens its hearts to the homeless masses. More than 50,000 are moved from Austria to other European countries. 
Out of the tragedy of Hungary has come an international mercy mission that knows no boundaries and no limits. Daily in Vienna, trains wait to take the children of Soviet oppression to a new home and a new life. This train is bound for Switzerland, where officials ask only two questions, name and birth date. Yesterday's suffering is eased by the hope of tomorrow. At the American Embassy in Vienna, crowds wait in the streets for admission to the United States. President Eisenhower offers asylum to 21,000, and officials work around the clock to speed them on their way. The first plane load arrives at McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. Stepping out into the crisp air of America, the refugees have found the freedom for which their countrymen yearned and fought and died. Offers of homes and jobs, clothing and food await them. By January 1st, all 21,000 refugees will have reached the United States in the biggest air-sea mercy operation in our nation's history. Under the stars and stripes, these Hungarians can work and wait and hope for the day when Hungary will be free. A wave of outrage and protest sweeps across free Europe in the wake of Russia's bloody stamping out of Hungary's anti-Soviet revolt. In West Berlin, torches lit a mass meeting of thousands. In Paris, angry crowds attack the stone fortress that houses the French Communist Party, setting fire to the massive structure during a four-hour riot. Holland, after a nationwide moment of silence and sympathy for Hungary, crowds stormed Communist Party headquarters in Amsterdam. One of the most orderly cities in Europe saw angry fighting, a fiery demonstration that summed up the continent's reaction to the Red Army's sack of Budapest. After repeated denunciations of the Hungarian puppet regime by the UN General Assembly, Imre Horvath, Hungarian foreign minister, leads his delegation in an angry exit from the assembly hall. Unimpressed, the assembly votes on a sweeping condemnation of Russian brutality in Hungary and the refusal of the red-dominated government to admit United Nations observers. With only a few abstentions, the nations of the world take their stand. Hungary's puppet regime and Russia are condemned. are welcomed by Governor and Mrs. Goodwin Knight as they arrive at International Airport for resettlement in the Bay Area. As the first contingent arrives on the West Coast, the welcome is especially warm for the fugitives who escaped with little more than their lives. Mrs. Knight is particularly touched by the plight of the children and displaced mothers. Some only recently in the center of Hungary's drab brutality are overcome at the sight of friendly faces and the enfolding arms of America. state, a new life, and above all, a friendship of free people.